The UN special envoy to Syria says international peace efforts have not succeeded, partly as a result of divisions between world powers. This comes a day after US Secretary of State Clinton said Russia and China will pay a price for allegedly supporting Assad. Well, for more on this, we can cross to Patrick Hennessy, who's a Mideast analyst and editor at Infowars.com. Patrick, it's quite an admission from the special envo envoy to Syria. Do you think the conflict can ever be resolved politically? Uh, politically or diplomatically, this conflict in Syria cannot be resolved at the table. I was on your program a week ago. I said that the Geneva talks will fail, and they have. And the reason they failed is because while they're all sitting at the peace table trying to make out a roadmap to peace, both the West, including the U.S. and the U.K., and the Gulf states like Saudi Arabia and Qatar are working to arm and back a rebel faction and multiple guerrilla armies within Syria to overthrow the regime. How could peace talks be ever carried out on any kind of bilateral basis when this is going on? So it's not the international community's uh, failure. It's the failure of the, uh, the UN and the special envoys to recognize that they cannot take the side of the U.S. and the U.K. Um, they're funding and backing rebels in a proxy war. It's absolutely ludicrous that Kofi Annan thinks that he could actually achieve anything. Clearly, though, a lot of division uh, amongst the international community, particularly with Russia and China. Hillary Clinton saying she wants Russia and China to pay a price if they continue to be intransigent, as she says. Um, what, what sort of price is she talking about? I think uh, with Hillary Clinton, uh, and she's also speaking at the Friends of Syria meeting in Paris, so... Uh, Hillary Clinton, it's very important that she's looking to talk tough, okay? This is an election year in the U.S., so you have Obama going for re-election. Hillary Clinton could be shuffled in her position come November. She could, she could become a vice presidential candidate or something like this. But this is typical talk out of Washington. The ultimate price that uh, China and Russia will pay uh, with regards to the U.S. is, is not to be known. Uh, China has an incredible economic advantage in leverage terms over the U.S. by holding a trillion dollars in treasury notes. And Russia uh, is, not, uh, is not in the Western bloc. So I think this is, a lot of this is rhetoric, Bill. This is uh, trying to create a narrative that the Syrian regime is wrong and that the West are right in, in, their, in their wanting regime change in Syria. A lot of this is trying to, it's a, it's a kind of a, uh, a media game of language. And Hillary keeps banging on the same points over and over again, even though they have nothing to do with reality. Isn't there a danger, though, that um, despite what's happening domestically in Syria, this could actually turn into a regional conflict? Already we've seen five people killed in Lebanon, a Turkish jet shot down recently. While this bickering goes on amongst those uh, world powers, as, it, as they call themselves, is there not a danger of it spreading much further now beyond Syria's borders? Well, if you look at the planning, if you're if you in the Pentagon right now, or in any of the top think tanks in the U.S., uh, or even a year ago, the plan is, Bill, the plan is regional destabilization, okay? The, the U.S. Embassy has drawn up plans as far back as early this year and is already organizing plans as far back as April to evacuate 20,000 American citizens from Lebanon and embassy staff and NGO workers, okay? This is, this, is, this is really happening, okay? You haven't read about it, but uh, it's on a very good source from in Beirut that it is happening. Now, what does that mean? That means they're already planning for the destabilization of Lebanon, Washington. So is this good news for Lebanon? No, it's not. Okay, Patrick, these, just, just briefly these, then, what is the end goal for all of this regional destabilization? What's the main aim here, just briefly, from your point of view? The main aim from a, from a Western geopolitical uh, perspective is to first uh, bring Syrian government down so that it is no longer an ally of Hezbollah. Then the next step is to bring and neutralize Hezbollah and possibly to confront them militarily and to, to, to dissolve Hezbollah. This would be easier done by destabilizing Lebanon uh, through some kind of a conflict. Once Hezbollah is eliminated, the door is now open for Israel and the U.S. to unilaterally strike Iran, which they've been talking about on and off for the last six or seven years. So they can't do that yet because, as we saw in 2006, Hezbollah um, took the Israeli army and sent it home, basically uh, limping home after the 2006 uh, conflict between Lebanon and Israel. So Hezbollah is a major obstacle. They are allied with Iran. 
and so once they're neutralized, the door is open for an attack on Iran, and that is the precursor to World War III as we know it. It's not something anybody really wants to see, but it seems to me the talk out of Washington and London is that they're looking in that direction. So we should all be very concerned about this. Grim prediction and very interesting perspective. Thank you very much indeed, Patrick Henderson, for joining us live there in London.